Hello and welcome to Money Life. This is Sucheta Dilan. Let's talk about jet airways today. Something that all of you know or have you begun to forget? It was once India's largest airline, went bankrupt in 2019, and our memories are short, so it's possible that we won't remember what happened. What we do know is that its founder, Naresh Goel, has been arrested and is currently in jail. Two days ago, the Bombay High Court refused to squash the arrest and remand of Naresh Goel by the Enforcement Directorate. Remember, he was arrested on 1st September on charges of money laundering. Now, on 7th, which is two days ago, the court dismissed his plea challenging his arrest as being illegal and said there was sufficient material to link him and his wife, Anita Goel, to a 538 crore fraud that happened at Canada Bank. Now, this is only the beginning. In fact, the first information report submitted by the ED is supposed to have said that Canada Bank was the first of several public sector banks which were part of a consortium that lent money to Jet Airways and the total amount that has apparently been siphoned off fraudulently from loans sanctioned to Jet Airways is estimated at a massive 5,716 0.34 crore, huge amount, and the loans to Jet Airways, of course, were a multiple of this amount. Now, the question that I have is, why is Mr. Goel and family alone in the dock? Surely a fraud of this magnitude cannot happen without the active collusion of statutory auditors and banks. What were they doing? Because this happened in a seven to eight year period between 2011 and 2018, when it finally began to default on its loans. Were bankers looking the other way? Who's going to ask them questions? In fact, if you look at the Jet Airways case, we've been covering bankruptcies regularly on this video blog. Now, it's a standard template. I've said this before, and it happens in every large bankruptcy case. The largest lenders, unfortunately, usually public sector banks from the consortium, seem to wake up only after there is a default. Then they order a forensic audit. In this case, State Bank of India ordered an audit by Ernst & Young, very popular for forensic audits. This audit was commissioned in 2019. So it began to default in 2018. Audit is commissioned in 2019. It submits its report early in 2021. Then the bank goes and says, oh, we are the victims. Look at this fraud that has happened. We needed a forensic audit to unearth it. Files a complaint with the CBI. CBI, as you know, the Central Bureau of Investigation. And of course, the Enforcement Directorate, the two busiest agencies of the last 10 years. Now, what also happens is when they start looking at their books, they discover that they have no worthwhile security against these thousands of crores that have been lent, tens of thousands of crores here. You want to buy a motorcycle or a home, they want collateral, they want sureties. But this size of loan, they have no worthwhile assets or collateral secured. They take personal guarantees very often. I don't know whether it was there in this case, it's not mentioned in the FIR, but usually those personal guarantees are not worth the paper that's written on because you the assets are not secured by the banks. They don't bother after getting a piece of paper. And the really shady promoters just go ahead and sell those assets way before they reach the level of default. So when there's a default, you go and look at the guarantee. There's a list of assets and nothing is recoverable. Banks, like I said, happily pay vic play victim. Now, again, after the insolvency and bankruptcy law was passed in 2016, this is a standard template. It's a forensic audit. So all work is done by these auditors. The agency jumps in, goes and investigates. So there are all kinds of companies there which nobody knows about. They will go and investigate further, rate them, seize assets, and file an FIR. This is exactly the sequence of events. Like I said, started with Canada Bank. You will soon have State Bank and others coming forward with their own because it has to total to this 5,000 crore because our innocent bankers had no idea what JET was doing, right? Now let's look at the JET Airways FIR in a little detail. The CBI filed an FIR on 3rd May against Naresh Goel, his wife, Anita, 
Jet Airways India Limited, Jet Air Private Limited, Jet Enterprises Private Limited, Jet Airways LLC Dubai. This is only for Canada Bank and the 538 crore. This happened, like I said, eight years between 2011 and 2019. Now, what did the forensic audit find? Take a look. First, irrational and inflated commissions of over 1,410 crore paid to various general sales agents and related parties controlled by the Goel family. So among those names that I talked about, maybe one is a wholly owned subsidiary of the listed company, Jet Airways Limited. The rest of them, private companies of the family, happily using the Jet Airways name and trademark, board of directors, independent directors, any number of corporate governance reports, nothing makes a difference. This carries on, as we have seen, scam after scam where regulators are kept busy going after something when there's no more money. Jet Airways now, when it comes to general sales agents, these sales agents are not individuals. These are companies, something LLC in Dubai, something in the US, something elsewhere. Jet Airways UK Limited, Jet Air LLC Dubai, Jet Airways of India LLC in USA, all controlled by the Goel family and many more. Now, what did the forensic audit find out? Irrational inflated commissions. Apparently, no airline uses general sales agents anymore. One used to use them. They also have stopped long ago. But this continued right until the airline collapsed, plane stopped flying. The forensic audit found that 403 crore, and I'm not going to round off, right, because the decimals don't matter. 403 crore was paid to agents who did not even have a formal GSA agreement. So it was like they do whatever they want. There is no control or cross-check or anyone finding out what the promoters were doing. Private entities, I've named some names, were related parties and getting these commissions. What was the quantum of commission? When were they increased? Basis of payment? All this is completely vague. ED has called these payments as proceeds of crime, and it has alleged that the Goel family used this money to acquire immovable properties in Delhi, in Bombay, luxury cars, and they had a vast staff in all these places, and those personal payments came out of the commissions paid to these companies. Amounts are not small. The ED has, in fact, impounded several hundred crore worth of assets and properties and jewelry and what have you after a series of raids that were conducted. The second thing that the forensic audit says is inflated payouts of over 1,152 crore were made to professionals and consultants. Now, who are these? These claim to be doing a certain job, raised an invoice uh, with Jet Airways, and the actual business of the company was completely different. For instance, a dealer in botanical products, mosquito coils, and chemicals was handling allegedly handling the payroll of senior employees of Jet Airways and got several crores paid to it. Another company, HD Pathak and Associates, was paid another 279 crore for handling the payroll, that's salaries, of GMs and below. Now, according to ED, almost the entire turnover of these companies is this payment. That means these were special purpose vehicles only for this business. And the investigation is still on as to who these are and what do they control. The third thing that the forensic audit discovered is massive loans and advances, as much as 2,547 crore, just one year, 2017-18, was granted to Jet Light Limited. Now, what is Jet Light Limited? A wholly owned subsidiary. In fact, it was Air Sahara which was bought in 2007 at some 1,400 plus crores. Jet, they like to say, wasn't able to digest this acquisition as well as some planes that they bought. So the overall impression outside has been that aviation is a risky business. Lots of big names fail. This was a business risk. They made some bad decisions. That is what a lot of people have argued on behalf of Naresh Goel saying he's this brilliant entrepreneur. People make mistakes. But the EDFIR is saying com something completely different based on a forensic audit. 
ED among other things also says Naresh Goel repeatedly rejected structured plans to salvage the airline by bringing in a foreign investor Etihad at one time wanted to come in there were foreign funds who wanted to come in but they required him to dilute his holding and not be in charge and he said nothing doing allowed the airline to collapse rather than agree to this so the ED says that it's preparing a trail with respect to 4057 crore that was diverted to two jet airway subsidiaries in contravention of loan agreements were entirely written on. The FIR, like I said, indicates not commercial decisions, but rampant diversion of funds from loans granted mainly by public sector banks and, of course, some private ones. ICICI has been a big one and done fraudulently. Now, like I said, this cannot happen without bankers colluding because you can't look away so seriously all the time for eight years, even when there are lots of red flags. The question is, did they monitor the loans and its end usage? Did they look at collateral or were they incentivized to studiously look the other way? Remember, Jet Airways may have been big, may have been the number one airline, but it has always been exceedingly controversial. In fact, as far back 21 years ago, in 2001, Mr. Arun Shori, who was then disinvestment minister, created a stir by saying in parliament that Jet Airways was not an Indian-owned company, though it was the whole pretense was this is a very homegrown Indian-owned company. In fact, its owner was a company called Tailwinds, which was registered in a tax haven, the Isle of Man. In fact, I had a Fiki seminar, and I'd written a piece about this in Rediff. There's a link here. Mr. Shori had even shown how a whole bunch of people in Fiki, Naresh Goel, was part of the aviation committee, wrote identical letters, including the grammar and uh, punctuation, to say no foreign holding beyond 25%. Why 25%? Because Tata Singapore Airline, which would have been a real threat, wanted to come in. And the whole industry was out to ensure this doesn't happen. Now, industry, which is not into aviation, is not bothered. But this shows the kind of control that people like Naresh Goel, Kingfisher, and others had over industry associations. A banker who has worked in one of these lenders and is very closely associated with bankruptcy resolution says, and I'm quoting him, it's stunning to see systematic diversion of bank loans apart from operating cash flow, which banks refuse to see. This is a fit case where banks must be made accountable for having failed to detect and cure the fund diversion. Instead, banks regularly tend to hide the most all but the most egregious cases by just dumping that bad loan onto asset reconstruction companies, which again are headed by their colleagues. This has been a scandal. RBI has investigated. They are, in fact, likely to cancel the licenses of three or four of them. It's a murky area. We've written about it. There's a link over here or go to Money Life if you want to read a couple of these articles which describe what happens with asset reconstruction companies. Now, let's look at another player in this. The statutory auditors, we depend on them. An investor who is outside, a shareholder, co-owner, has to depend on statutory auditors. Who are the auditors for Jet Airways? Chaturvedi and Shah. Now, Chaturvedi and Shah has the dubious distinction of having as their clients a whole roster of bankrupt com companies, which have also been accused of fraud. Like I said, the same old template. Divan Housing and Finance Limited, Eros and Eros International, Crompton Greaves, Part and Industrial Solution are just three I'm going to name over here. Now, this level of fraud and manipulation cannot happen without collusion by bankers and the statutory auditors certifying, so bigger role, certifying that all is well. The last few years after bankruptcies have increased, we have seen that both the Securities and Exchange Board of India, the market regulator, and NFRA, have, which is the audit regulator, have been punishing and looking at these companies. But it's too little and too late. Once a company has completely collapsed with this, Divan Housing, or it is Cafe Coffee Day, little point in a few lakhs and debarring 
auditors for a few years. We need different rules which makes them accountable while the company is alive so that small investors, people like you and me, if you have invested here and believed in these auditors, we should not lose money. Now, how much has been written off because of such bad loans? It's not a small amount. At the least, it's a staggering 14.5 lakh crore since 2014-15 in the last nine years alone. All these stories are of the last nine years, 2011 to 18 or whatever. Now, Jet Airways has gone in for resolution. Like I said, by the time it goes to the bankruptcy court, there's no assets, no guarantees, nothing left. So... They have agreed to a resolution plan where they will write off 95% of the admitted claims of 7,800 crore. You can just hear these numbers or think about it as you taking a personal loan of 1 lakh or a motorcycle loan of 80,000 and what will happen if you don't pay. Here, 7,800 crore, 95% written off and then as a little lollipop, they're going to get 9.5% stake in the airline, which is being revived by this consortium, which is buying it over. Another 7.5% stake in the loyalty program as and when it starts. So just some little hope that you might get more than 5% and the lenders agree because this is the highest bid. There's nobody bidding anymore. So who's the highest bidder? It's a consortium called Jalan Kalrock Consortium. They won this bid in June 2021. They were supposed to infuse over a thousand crore of cash. Bit of this money finally came in in September 2021. That is less September end. So that's just about a month ago. So this revival has been dragging. Nothing much happening. And it doesn't stop there. So who is Jalan Kalrock? Jalan happens to be from the Gulf UAE. Kalrock is owned by someone, Kalrock Capital Partners, if you please, is owned by someone called Florian Fritsch. Why is he important? Because Lickerstein, a tax haven, has launched an investigation against Florian Fritsch, conducted raids against him right now in September. So this has again raised questions. What is this kind of money coming to revive the company? Who is it? Who is going to be behind it? These questions have been raised by other creditors. Remember, so many of them are losing enormous sums of money. We're not just the financial creditors. Like other cases, Jet Airways also will go into a long legal battle, starting with Canada Bank, others like SBI coming in, it will drag on maybe for decades. And finally, you'll have a verdict when you and at least I may not even be around and no one will care what really happened. The only constant in all this will be that PSPs will continue to collude with large corporates and large-scale diversion of funds. That will go on. Cases will go on, investigations will go on, and new NPAs will be formed because this government has done nothing to make bankers accountable after having promised to root out corruption. Na khaunga, na khane dunga. If you agree, let's raise our voice share this video, subscribe to it, make more people aware of what's going on. Thank you.